So I was working on my uh, on the Digibon project, getting my uh, game set up, and I thought I'd add some functionality so that when the player uh, completes a certain amount of objectives in the game, that uh, he would be able to get, he or she would be able to get into the city museum, uh, Stadtmuseum. So I got my door inside Blender to uh, open up a as an animation. Um, I imported it into Blender, uh, imported that Blender file into Unity, and this is what I got. My door animation was all jacked up. As you see right here, uh, something weird with the f way the door opens and shuts, that suddenly uh, it opens and closes okay, but the uh, the models shifted uh, in odd ways, and I spent several days trying to figure out why this was doing it. And it came down to, uh, I found out, it came down to simply a question of model rotation and model size inside Blender, which I'm going to take a look at right now. Okay, so I'm inside Blender right now, and I'm looking at the model of the city museum, a wireframe, and I have the bottom floor highlighted. I'm going to select that layer, go to orthographic view, top view, and what was causing all the problems with the doors specifically was when I created the model, I did not uh, pay attention to all the advice that I saw on the internet, and I made changes to the rotation, for instance, uh, in rotation and sizing in the model, uh, on the model, inside of object mode right here. You see an object mode where I could have maybe selected, I should have selected edit mode. So what happened is uh, when I brought those models into Blender, they were all askewed. I went back in, I highlighted the model, and I did uh, Alt-S to clear the sizing, or clear the scale, and the scale si uh, shifts. And then if I do Alt-R for rotation, well, the rotation is all, all whacked out. So um, when I brought those models into Unity, um, you know, I have no idea what's going on in the back end, but essentially I was getting something that was just, uh, just all, all askance and askew inside of, uh, there we go, inside of Unity. So, uh, what I had to do was I went back into Blender, I deleted some meshes, uh, rotate, uh, did the Alt R and Alt Alt S to clear the rotation and the scale. Uh, went back in, did all changes to the mesh uh, inside of the edit mode right here, and um, basically then I re-imported all of the models into Unity. I burned everything down to the ground, and using what I learned over the last couple weeks, I went back in and made changes and this is what I got right now. Okay so I'm now inside the new Digibon game or the one that I'm rebuilding from the ground up um, and now I'm moving around inside the well uh, much more minimal world. Um, I was able to find a script that uh, I if you can see I have a different mouse right here it's actually sort of a uh, something I grab sort of for a first-person shooter game, when I uh, mouse over certain objects, let's say this door that I want open, the, uh, the mouse cursor changes, and also, you look right here, I was just testing to see if it would support the German language uh, for, insert, for inserted text, and it, if I can get it right here so we can sort of, sort of see the, uh, it's a little more difficult. There we go, right here. Um, machen Sie die Tür zum Museum auf. So when I my mouse cursor goes over 
the object that I need to interact with, it changes and it brings up this um, visual prompt. So uh, what's really cool is I could uh, open the door and now it says, uh, you can sort of see it right here, uh, it's hard. Machen Sie die Tür zum Museum zu. So close the door and so I close it. So what's nice is there's no gap and that's the tightest door fit I have ever seen. So everything is working great and what's cool is I can open this door but I could also go to this one and open that one as well. Uh, the other one there on the other side of the plaza is closed and so I could just close that one too and open that one and close that one and open that one and back and forth all day. So um, that was another problem that I had uh, trying to get two animations on one mesh to play simultaneously or play independently of each other. And so the script that I found on the internet, and I have a link to it on my blog, um, a little more complex, took me a couple days to get my head wrapped around it, but uh, most, those programming classes I took in the past have paid off, and so now I'm getting the doors to do exactly what I want, and I have no unsightly gaps anywhere, and... Um, yeah, so it looks like the Digibond project is moving forward nicely, and I will have opportunity to finish that. Uh, I've got to work on some of the other interactivity with picking up bottles and cans and throwing them into the recycling containers and working some of the code out for that, but um, essentially it's just sort of grinding the code out now and making it work right. So, all right, the Digibond game.